start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play, I must start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Hello, everyone. To starting with Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today, our story is so exciting. We are learning about how Jesus has the power to do whatever he needs to do. In fact, I am so excited because, well, this story is just an amazing story of God's power. So I can't wait to hear all about it. But before we get to our story, let's praise Jesus with some singing. Now, I wanna make sure that when you are singing God's praises or listening to God's praises in our programs that you're singing along too. Because the best thing to do when you are feeling discouraged or when you are needing some extra boost in the day is to sing a song. So go ahead and sing along with us as we sing about God's mighty power. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise, that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the shines full at his command and all the stars obey there's not a plant or flower below but makes thy glories known and clouds arise and tempests blow by order from thy throne creatures that borrow life from thee are subject to thy care there's not a place where we can flee, but God is present there. sharing my testimony and I call it my tribute to our journey of grace. 
As followers of Christ, we should make our words such as to be a help and an encouragement to one another in the Christian life. Far more than we do, we need to speak of the precious chapters in our experience. We should speak of the mercy and loving kindness of God, of the matchless depths of the Savior's love. Our words should be words of praise and thanksgiving. I was born on the 16th October and I was named Gihon Ruvin. Gihon meaning Valley of Grace, Ruvin meaning Behold the Sun. Today, I will testify to God's grace that we experienced in my life in June 2023. We were in Kolkata in Eastern India for six weeks. It was a blessed time. We lived in one of our lifestyle centers. We had a lot of friends and learned a lot of things. On the 5th of June too, after our family devotion, we walked out into the village. My mom's therapist was accompanying us for. We were right in front of the campus where I put my foot on the road when a speeding truck came at me. I don't remember anything that happened next as I lost my consciousness. My sister describes that moment as seeing me fly as the dust in the air. My parents behind me just wanted to know if I made it. This is where the accident took place. I was where the beginning of the arrow is and my parents found me at the end of the arrow. When my dad picked me up, I was unconscious with blue lips. However, I gained consciousness within a minute. I had lots of bruises and a few open wounds. Only one wound on my head had to be sutured. My parents say that only when we make it to heaven, we will see how many angels were deployed to save me that day. The truck driver tried to steer away and was brought to a halt by a transformer which also had burst with fumes and sparks. He survived no injuries. God saved me without a single broken bone. Usually in that part of our country, the vehicle driver is beaten to death at the accident site. But with this driver, it was different. Neither my parents nor anyone from the campus yelled or pointed fingers at him. He and his family were so impressed by that. He kept visiting me until we returned. We hope and pray that one day he will accept Jesus too. Psalms 91, 11 and 12 says, For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Indeed, it was the angels who held me that day. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, For my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. May we experience and acknowledge God's grace in every moment. As a family, we praise God for saving my life, and we will continue to serve Him in all we do. It's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Looks like today's Nature Spotlight are pictures sent to us by Elijah. Location, Chad, Africa. It looks like you're a junior shepherd caring for God's little baby goat. Reminds me of our good shepherd, Jesus, always leading, guiding, and protecting us from evil. Enjoy your little goat and think of the good shepherd every day, Elijah. And thanks for sending this in. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's wonderful nature, the big and the small that God has designed especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. And don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it. I was just reading your memory verse for this week. Can you say it with me? All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. John 5, 28 and 29. I cannot wait until that day because I have lost many friends and family members um, to death, and I can't wait for the day that Jesus calls them forth. Today, we get a sneak peek into what that day will be like. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you. We ask that you be here with us now. Thank you for defeating death and for helping us to know that there will be a better day, a wonderful day when you come in the clouds of glory and we'll get to see those loved ones that we have lost again. I pray that you send your spirit to be here with us now, and help us to learn. In your name we pray. Amen. 
Today's story is called Lazarus, Come Forth. Do you guys remember Lazarus, Martha, and Mary? That's right. They were some of Jesus' best friends, and they lived in Bethany. So we're going to go back to Bethany now. It was about two miles from Jerusalem, and that's where those three friends lived. They believed, and he didn't even have to convince them. They knew who he really was, and they believed that he was the Messiah. And that's why when they sent him a message, Jesus really extra paid attention. It says in John, we're going to be today, 11. John 11, verse 3. Therefore, the sisters sent to him, capital him, so that's Jesus, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Have you ever heard that one of your friends is sick? That's a really sad feeling, isn't it? Because we don't want people to be hurting or feel sick. And the message probably took a day or two to get to Jesus, and his response was in verse 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. So, of course, people assumed that he was going to go right away and heal him, or maybe he would just heal him where he was at, and he would get better, right? This is how Jesus had operated in the past. And so that's why this story was especially puzzling for people, because... Of the next verse it says now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus so when he heard that Lazarus was sick he Jesus stayed two more days in the place where he was that doesn't make any sense whatsoever right why wouldn't he have rushed home to Bethany to be beside the bed of his friend right why wouldn't he have done that then after he said this to his disciples he, um, he then said after the two days Let, let's go to Judea again the disciples said to him rabbi lately the Jews sought to stone you and are you going to go there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of the world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go to wake him up. Then his disciples said, Well, I guess if the Lord said he sleeps, then he will get well, because usually when someone is sick and they get some rest, that really does help them to feel better, right? However, Jesus didn't speak about the sleep of getting better or the sleep of nighttime. He was talking about the sleep that is death. But Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he was speaking about rest and sleep, right? Then Jesus said to them plainly, because he realized they didn't get it. Lazarus is dead. <gasps> you can imagine the looks of surprise on his disciples' faces. Why on earth would Jesus have let one of his best friends die? And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. What? You're glad that he died? This makes... Oh, I'm so confused. Are you a little confused? If you're with me, you're a little confused, right? Why this would happen. But of course, Jesus has the master plan in his mind, and he's going to show us what that is. So keep listening. Now, when he said that he sleeps, we got to learn a little bit about what death is like, right? When someone dies, the first death, they sleep. It's just like a sleep. Now, it's not like sleep, so we don't have to worry about going to sleep and dying. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about when someone dies, the next thing that they're going to know is when they wake up from the sleep of death, when they wake up, the first thing they're going to see is Jesus coming in the clouds of glory. We don't need to worry about that death, right? Because that death is just temporary until the second coming, right? So, that's why when people die who love and know Jesus, we're really sad, and we miss them so very much. But we can know that they are just simply sleeping until Jesus comes. Isn't that amazing? That he will be coming and waking them up, saying, come forth. Oops, I might have just told you what was going to happen. So what did they do? They headed to Bethany. And then when they got there, he had already been in the tomb, buried for four days. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Mary and Martha, and they come to comfort them concerning their brother. Because that's what friends do, right? We comfort each other. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, he, God will give it to you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And that's where Martha showed that she understood death, right? Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he who believes in me, though he may die, shall live. I love those words, don't you? Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe that? 
She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into this world. And when she had said these things, she ran and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to Jesus. Both the sisters there with Jesus. As soon as she, oh, fast forward. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her at the house, comforting her, when they saw her leaving, they thought, oh, she's probably going to the tomb to weep there. So then everybody followed Mary to the tomb. When Mary came to Jesus and saw him, she fell down on her face at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews came to her with weeping, and he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? He wanted to go and see where Lazarus was sleeping, the sleep of death, right? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And this is the shortest verse in the Bible, right? Jesus wept. Jesus knew what was going to happen at the end of the story, and yet he wept. Because that's what friends do. Friends cry together. Friends laugh together. Friends are there for each other. And then Jesus said, see how you loved him? The Jews said, see how you loved him? Because Jesus really did love Lazarus so much. And some of them said, could not this man have opened the eyes of the blind and yet kept this man from dying? They did not understand still. Jesus again, groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, Take the stone away. Martha and the sister of him who was dead said to him, Oh, Lord, it's going to be stinky, right? He's been dead for four days. And Jesus said, Did I not say to you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? And then he took away the stone, and he said, He prayed, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you will always hear me. But the, because of the people who are standing here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And that's when he called into that dark cave, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out, bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. He could barely see, right? And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. That's the kind of God we serve, the God who can take death and show us life, and the God who can't wait to come and have all of his children be alive in heaven with him again. Amen and praise God. Until next time, start with Jesus by exploring His Word. Hello, welcome to Craft Time. Today we'll be doing a craft on Lazarus. And this is what it should look like at the end. You have the tomb and the stone that they rolled away. And there's Lazarus. So let's get started. What you'll need are scissors and make sure you're careful with them. A pen or a pencil for tracing, a brad, a white piece of paper so that you can trace out and draw Lazarus, a black piece of paper, and a brown piece of paper, and some glue too. So what you'll do for starters is trace out a Lazarus. And once you're done tracing him out, cut him out. You don't have to draw a person because remember when Lazarus came out, he was wrapped in cloth. What you can do to make it look like he's wrapped in cloth is draw lines, horizontal lines on his body. All right, once you've cut out Lazarus, we'll cut out a tomb and you can trace it beforehand and then cut it out. Make sure it's pretty big so that a stone will be able to fit in front of it and Lazarus will be able to fit in it. There you go. Now that we've cut out the tomb, we'll cut out a hole in the tomb. Kind of like this. And make sure it's tall enough for Lazarus to fit in it. All right, now we're gonna take the black piece of paper and cut just a small rectangle to be able to fit behind the cave entrance, behind the tomb entrance. And what you'll do with that is you'll take it and behind the cave, what you'll do is you'll take your glue and put a small line around the cave and Use that to glue the black piece of paper down behind and make sure it covers 
the cave entrance. So from the other side, it will look like that. And now we'll cut out the stone. Make sure you have a pretty big stone so that it will be able to fit in front of the hole. Before we take care of the stone, let's go ahead and glue Lazarus to the black piece of paper. And you'll take your brad and you'll stick it through the side of the brown paper. So figure out how you want it aligned, how you want it to sit. And then you'll take the two flaps of the brad and push, pull, put them down. And now you'll have a stone that covers the entrance of the tomb and you can open it. And there is Lazarus. I hope you have fun making the craft. It's time now to see what our questions were last week and if you got them right. Shout out to Andrew, Benjamin, Bethany, Chrysalin, Allison, Emmeline, Nicholas, Nia, Leah, Savannah, August, Scarlett, Gideon, Liliana, Eliora, Jordan, Mia, Analia, Benji, Levi, Cooper, Viata, Taylor, Lindy, Garrett, Jude, Isaiah, Olivia, Daniel, Clarice, Eliana, Gabriel, Nelson, Noah, Dom, Benny, Denny, Ellie, Mia, Andrea, Emil, Faith, David, Ruby, and Owen. Great job answering your questions. It's question time for today's story, Lazarus, Come Forth. I hope you were listening, and these would be great questions to go over with your family so that you can learn and dig deeper into God's Word to learn about these very important topics. All right, are you ready for the questions? Question number one. Well, before I tell you them, make sure that you email me the answers at answers at startingwithjesus.com. That's answers at startingwithjesus.com. Okay, we're ready. Here we go. Number one. Why did Jesus not go to Bethany right away? Why did Jesus not go to Bethany right away? Number two, what happens when someone dies? What happens when someone dies? And number three, what will happen when Jesus comes again to those who have died believing in Jesus? What will happen when Jesus comes again to those who have died believing in Jesus? I can't wait to hear from you. All who are all who are in, in the graves in the graves will find, will find his voice his voice and hear him and hear him Matthew Matthew 5 5 28, 28, 28 and 29 and 29 Happy Sabbath from California from California All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth John chapter 5 verse 28 and 29 Bye happy Sabbath I'll see you next week All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth John 28 and 29 Bye happy Sabbath from Texas All who are in the grave will hear his voice and come for John 5, 28, 29. Bye, happy, happy Sabbath, Sabbath from California. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation john 5 28 and 29 bye happy sabbath from arkansas John 5, verse 28, 29. All 
who are in the graves the oof well here is what and come for John 5 verse 28 29 bye happy Sabbath from California oh, we're in the grave of life Ooh, you have to to the to the resurrection of God. All who are in the grave will hear his word and come forth All who are in the grave will hear his word and come forth John chapter 5 28 29 This week's memory verse comes from John 5, verse 28 to 29. It says, All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Bye, happy Sabbath. See you next week. All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. John 5, 28 and 29. Bye. All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. John 5, 28 and 29. Bye, happy Sabbath! John? John 5, 20, 28 and 29. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. All in that the are in the grave shall hear his voice and come forth. And they? they that have done good of the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. John? John 5, 28 and 29. Bye! Bye. Sabbath from Smokey Wake Up Arla. Bye! shall hear his voice and come forth. Bye, happy Sabbath from the Philippines. <laughs> All who are in the grace will hear his voice and come forth. John 5 verse 28 and 29. Bye, happy Sabbath. See you next week. All who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth. John 5, 28 and 29. Bye, happy chapter. See you next week, friends. All who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. John 5, 28 and 29. Goodbye, happy Sabbath. From Chad, Africa. All who are in the graves will, will, will hear his voice and come forth. John 5. 28 and 29. Bye, happy Sabbath from Tennessee. All who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth. John. John 5, verse 28 and 29. Bye, happy Sarah from Tennessee. All who are in the grave. Will hear his voice and come forth. John five verse twenty six. Twenty eight. Verse twenty 
eight and twenty nine. And twenty nine. Bye. Happy Sabbath from Tennessee. All that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. All that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. John five twenty twenty eight twenty nine. Sabbath by all who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth. John five twenty eight and twenty nine. Bye. Happy Sabbath. All who are in the grave will hear his voice and come forth. John five. Verse 28 and 29. Today's experiment is a pretty simple one, but to get the full effect, you'll probably need to do this one at home. You'll need some thread, a fork, and some scissors just to cut the thread. So we're gonna start by taking a piece of thread about the length of your arms, and then cut it. Then we're gonna fold the string in half and then tie this piece right around the fork. Now I'm gonna separate these two pieces and then wrap it around my fingers. Now the fork can just hang. Now, listen closely and see if you can hear. If I hit this fork on the table, what do you hear? <coughs> do you hear that chiming? <coughs> okay, now, if you're doing this at home, what you're going to do is you're gonna hit the fork on the table and then Take your fingers and touch the smalls of your ears. <coughs> Do you hear the difference? You want the string to come in contact with that little flap that goes over your ear. Let's try it again. The vibrations sound completely different. You really have to try this at home. When the fork hits the table, it vibrates. This makes the air around it vibrate and you will hear a dull clink, but it makes the thread vibrate too. When you put your fingers near your ears, you bring the thread closer and the sound sensors in your ears can hear the vibrations much more clearly. Now, they make a clear chiming sound in your ear. God's voice is powerful. His voice spoke the world into existence. His voice raised Lazarus from the dead, and when he comes again, all who hear his voice will come out of their graves. You know, I want God's voice to have power in my life too. And just like this thread, the vibrations and the sound were more powerful when we came in contact with them. It's the same way with Jesus. When we come in contact with Jesus, his voice 
will have more power in our lives too. Thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you were here. Wasn't that a great story today? Jesus is mighty power. He can raise the dead. When he said, Lazarus, come forth. What did Lazarus do? Came forth. You know what? Jesus still has that power today. When he comes again and he lifts that mighty trumpet. Oh, I can't wait till that day. And raises the dead to live eternally with him. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much that you have the power to raise the dead and you have the power to change our hearts. Lord, I pray that you will help us to be ready for that wonderful, glorious day when you come again. When Lazarus, when others who have been laid to their rest will be raised up by your mighty voice, we'll see them and go up to heaven together. Help us, Jesus, every day to spend that time with you so that when we see you, we can say, this is our God whom we have waited for. We love you, Jesus. We thank you in your wonderful name, in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep it